So how did this all start? Well, oh, well I suppose it was Doc's announcement three months you know, ahead of the drop, about April, that they were going to poison Papakai, Mori Howe and you know, some other block that I don't know the name of. Yeah, so. And then you heard the poison was being loaded down the, in Fidianga Central. Well, we wondered where they were storing it. And um, one of the locals rang up and said that he could smell 1080 in the central business, business district of Woodyanga. Right amongst the houses and supermarkets and things. So we decided that we better go and get some photos. We're always silent witness and take photos of all these things. We, so didn't, we didn't believe it was legal. So your intention was always to take photos? Yeah, yeah we're never violent. I've been attending 1080 drops for about 44 years. And not one has ever been violent. And so what went wrong in this case, do you think? Well, this is the first time I've ever attended a drop that, that it was run by security. Doc had employed thugs, you know, not registered security staff. They'd employed thugs to do their bidding and things just went wrong. And for, for the court case itself, did you, do you think it was fair what the prosecution put forward? There was a lot of lies in the prosecution's case. And, you know, and in the end, they just didn't add up for the judge. Do you think the original footage, once it was obtained and used in court, made a difference to the outcome? Absolutely, I was relying on the CCTV footage to, to prosecute the security staff and then all of a sudden the police decided to prosecute me. Thank God the security footage saved my life then. Do you think uh, Department of Conservation uh, had any uh, or, or could have done things a little bit better in any way or, or do you think they just did what they were required to do? No, the Department of Conservation, you know, they they're trying to run their outfits like military outfits now. They've got helicopters going here and little soldiers running there and so forth. And I think the whole game has become too much for them. Yeah, I heard this just this week that there's a crowd called Zip and they're going to increase the poison rates by the sound of it across the country, up to eight kilograms per hectare of poison bait. What, what impact will that have to your waterways? Well, <laughs> the waterways are in a mess already. You know, why would you double or treble the amount of 1080 in them now? I'm going to say our fish, you know, our trout are a risk to eat. I'm going to say I, I no longer eat wild pork out of the Coromandel. It's just, just, just too much risk now. And there's real, real hardship amongst families now because they've taken the deer and the pork away. You know, that, that may, went a long way to feed some families. And decisions today, how did you find the judge's outcome? Yeah, it was, you know, I've always expected um, the outcome to be not guilty because in actual fact I wasn't guilty and I knew that. And so you know, I had some hairy moments, but um, yeah, he got there in the end. How's this had an impact on you and Julie over the last so many months? Has it been an easy ride or what? No, Can you just explain no, that? Julie said it's the worst three months she's ever lived through. Uh, you know, probably the amongst the worst three months I've lived through as well. Yeah. It was a terrific spring. You know, we, we don't have any faith in the police or the media after this. You know, I've always been, I've always backed police to the hill. But after this, you know, this charge, there's someone pulling their strings. Do you think that the charges were unreasonable from the start? No, there was common assault. But they, they got the wrong person and they knew they had the wrong person. You know, I, hadn't, I never assaulted anyone. I'm just saying, the mere fact that I was trying to shut the door during the assault and shut the security guard out of my vehicle, out of my camper van, you know, shows that I didn't wish to jump out and do battle. You know, and I certainly had no intention of punching him or kicking him. Do you think anything will come out of this? We hope, but you know, I, I don't intend to give up the fight. None of us, well, I. And, just myself in particular, will never give up the fight to keep 1080 out of our water supplies. Water supplies is important to me. You know, I'm not going to give up fighting for that. And that's what this was all about, the Wittianga water supplies. That's how it all started. Yeah, anything you'd want to tell the people about, about what to look, 
any cautions they should have about <laughs> this sort of behaviour, this, this sort of defending our rights? Yeah, well, we've, we, we had a meeting last night at the campground and we will, will not go near Department of Conservation or the police without GoPro cameras and mutual support and mutual vehicle support. Not anymore. We're not going to be caught again like that.